In this problem, I've got some arbitrarily shaped beam with an arbitrary cross-section, which I did with a style spline. And I extruded it mid-plane from the uh, center axis. Uh, I sketched on the right plane my sketches right there. And I want to apply an upward force at the bottom of this beam, right in the middle. And that'll be balanced by two downward forces. And I want this to be a pin connection. I, I'm not going to use a fixed support on either side. I need to define a point at which I'm going to apply that upward force. The easiest way to do that, I think, is to right click, make that sketch visible, and then I'll zoom in on it. And I want to use a reference geometry, a point right here. So I'll go reference geometry, a point, uh, click on point, and then select that, and I'll click OK. And that gives me a point number that I can reference for the upward force. And now I'll go into the simulation, a static simulation, and I'll apply a force, an upward force, at point four. And I can't use normal right now, or perhaps I could in this instance. Oh, I can't. So I can't do it for uh, these arbitrary edges. It doesn't exactly know what normal is. So I'll go select a direction, and I'll use the top plane for my direction. It doesn't really matter, but the top plane will give me, uh, I'm selecting a plane right down the middle of it. And I'll do, I'll apply my force, let's stay in English units, a force normal to the top plane on point four, and I'll use a force of 100 pounds. And that shows me my upward point. I now have the direction and the magnitude of the upward force there. And that has to be balanced by downward forces on either end. So I'll right click here, do another force. And let's apply it here. And again, I'll use the top plane for a selected direction. And I'll go to English, normal to that plane, one 100 pounds to balance that downward force. And I'll go. Uh, in my selected direction here, again, I need to do the top plane, a direction normal to that. And I'll come back over to here, and we'll do the same thing for the right side, apply a force there. And I'm going to, again, select total. So a total force, uh, the sum of both faces is going to be 100 pounds upward, and uh, that ought to balance the force right in the middle. Or actually, the point right in the middle, the force there was upward. I want these to be downward. So I'll click reverse direction here, and those will counter the upward force. It's a little bit of a rendering issue on my machine. Sometimes you won't be able to see all the arrows at once, but zoom in on them. You should be able to capture it. And now you would think, I'll click Run, or actually I'll save it. Be sure to save it before you run anything. And I run this. It ought to throw an error. And what it said, again, was no restraints defined. So we'll use the Inertial Relief option, like I talked about in the previous screencast. So I'll right click here, go Properties, and now Inertial Relief. Click OK, and this ought to run for us. And here I've changed the color to something a little bit easier to interpret. Again, uh, in this plot, I'm plotting the normal stress at, along the beam. The right view here shows the beam is under compression at the bottom, under tension at the top, as, as we would expect. Let's take a look at the interior of this beam. I'll right-click and go Section Clipping. In this, automatically, it's choosing the front plane, but you can choose whatever plane uh, you'd like to visualize the data. We could uh, section at the top, the uh, at the right side, if I wanted to look that direction. But let's li let's use the front plane, and I'll cut it in half so that we can see into there. I'll unclick Show Section Plane, and if you'd like, we can unclick Show Contour on the uncut portion of the model. And when I click OK here, it shows me the stresses at the middle of the beam, but it won't show me any stresses off to the right side. Maybe if you wanted to emphasize to somebody, the stresses here is what you're interested in. So we come back to isometric, and now you can see in the, uh, the heart of the beam the stress profile. And if you'd like to, to get rid of the section plane, just right click again, go section clipping, and at the bottom, there's this button, Clipping On Off. I'll turn the clipping off right now so we can look at it. And I'll turn it back on again. So colors are, are useful for seeing qualitative uh, trends. But let's say you wanted to do something quantitative. You want to pull actual numbers off of here. You can't really do it uh, by looking at colors. So I'll show you a way that we can, we can go about doing that. I'm going to delete this static study because I'm going to make some pretty dramatic changes to the part. To make that happen, what I need to do is cut this part into uh, two different pieces. If I come to the, uh, the top view on the part, we'll look straight down on it. What I'm going to want to do is create a part, uh, cut the part here, and come down. I'm going to do that by uh, identifying the intersection between two planes. Here's the front plane going into the screen. And if I wanted to, I could use the intersection between the front plane and the right plane. But let's say we wanted to know the stresses at some arbitrary location between the two planes. What I need to do is create a reference geometry, a plane, and I'll make this plane 
I'll use the, uh, the right plane in parallel or some distance from the right plane. Let's say I wanted it, uh, I don't know, five inches uh, from the right plane. Or let's do, I don't know, eight inches, make it arbitrary. So now I've got a reference plane out here and I'm going to section it with the intersection, I'm going to slice it, the intersection between this plane and the right plane. So I'll click OK to accept my uh, new reference plane. Now what I want to do is insert features and split. So once I do that, let's use the trim tools, uh, trimming surface, uh, plane one is highlighted, and let's do the front plane for the other intersection. Now when I cut this part, what you can see is going to cut it into four different pieces. And it's the intersection between these two, the new part that I want, this vertical line, I want to be able to plot my stresses along that line, which is why I need to slice this. So I'll say cut part and a new dialog will appear in the lower left. Let's say I want to save, I actually do want to make four cuts. I can click all four of these and it will leave me with four different bodies. So I'll click OK on that. Now I've got four actual different bodies within that first extrude that I had. But let's delete the split. That's not exactly what I want to do. So we'll delete that. Insert features a split. So if I look at this, you can envision four different parts, and I'll click Cut Part. It identifies all four. I really just want to cut out this body. It might be hard to see, but body three is that one there. So I'll click body three. And now, if I click Consume Bodies, it will cut out body three, just so you can see what's going on. I'll do that. You don't really want to do that. But now when I zoom in on it, once I run the analysis, all the original part will still be there. But I'm going to pick up on values along this cut, so we can make a graph of the stress later on. So I'll, I'll delete this split. I didn't do what we wanted to do, so I'll delete that. And that puts the, the split back there. So I'll go again, insert a split, and I'll use plane one, and again, I'll use the uh, front plane to make it click cut part. Really, all I want is part three, and I'll make sure that this is unclicked and I'll click OK on that and now what I've got under solid bodies I've got the first uh, that new body and then here's the original or the original is split into two different bodies which gives me something to work with for the solid analysis so now I'll go into uh, create a solid a, uh, a static simulation we don't want to use a fixture again but let's apply a force to that uh, that center point if I don't see it I'll uh, right click here and uh, identify where point four is located. So I'll put it on point four in a selected direction that is, we want it normal to the top plane. And let's use English units. We'll go normal to that, 100 pounds, and this will give me the upward force at the center of it. But remember, we're really interested in, in the stresses along this cut here. So we need to put the uh, supporting forces down. So right click and force, and I'll pl apply a force right here, and a force at this face and this face. And these are going to be the downward forces. And we'll do a selected direction and maybe again we'll, we'll do it normal to the top plane. So English units, 100 pounds, and I want to reverse the direction so they act opposite. And I'll really want to make sure that I've clicked total for the 100 pounds. So the sum of, of all the forces on these two faces and then the face to the left. Now remember what we, we'd seen before, this will throw an error, so make sure that you right click here, go properties, and make sure that the uh, inertial relief is in place so it won't throw you an error. Remember before you run it, always save it, make sure you don't lose anything. And now I'll click run. Here's my deformed shape. Let's go back to model and come back to static. There's one thing that you need to make sure is that component, component contacts will go edit definition you want to make sure that the contact types, it identifies contacts between two different parts, so the face here and the face here. We want to make sure that they're bonded. It's just like uh, they're glued in place, and as far as the simulation is concerned, they're just one integral piece. But I really wanted to make sure that I had two pieces so that I can see this vertical line right here. So that global contact is there. Uh, rerun the simulation if I want. And here I get my deformed shape. So here I've got the simulation. I made a new plot showing the normal stress in the x direction. And again, what we're interested in is making a graph of the normal stress as a function of y, the vertical component. So once you've got the graph activated, right click, go probe. We want to probe on selected entities. And the selected entity we're going to select is this vertical line right here. 
Sometimes this can be tricky to select it, so once you're here, right click and go select other. That allows you to click the line that we're interested in. So there's a line right there. It crosses the midpoint. It's some arbitrary distance between the center and the end of this. And once I've clicked edge, that particular edge, I'll update it. And this gives me the actual data at different positions. I'll say, let's make a plot. This shows me the normal stress as a function of parametric distance. Parametric distance is just the percentage of uh, distance along that selected entity. And what I observe is that it goes at the uh, top of the bar. It's under tension or positive value. And now it's under compression towards the bottom of this bar. So it goes uh, negative values. Let's say I want to use Excel or, some, or MATLAB or some other program to uh, graph it. I'm going to go save and I'll just say, uh, I'll call this results one, save it to my uh, desktop. And then I'll go into Excel and open that results file. It will show the x value was all at 8 inches where I defined that reference plane. Z was always uh, 0 for that location. So the z axis here is running is at 0. It runs right down the center line, value of 0 for z. Notice that I've only got uh, a total of 7 nodes to deal with. Let's make it a little bit better. I'll close this out. I'll come back and let's refine the mesh. We'll get out a probe here. Right click on mesh and we'll create a mesh. We'll remesh it. And now let's make it as fine as possible. It's a small part so this won't be an issue. So I make the mesh and I run it. And after 15 seconds or so it will give me that. Uh, it runs it with the finer mesh. And now I'll right click probe on selected entities again. So under here, so I'll right click select other to allow me to click this line which I want. Update that and now I've got a number of uh, nodes to deal with. It makes a little bit nicer graph. So I'll save this again to the desktop. I could call it results 2. Go into Excel, open up the desktop results 2. And now I've got a few, a few more points to deal with. A total uh, count of uh, 13 nodes. Maybe easiest. Let's make a graph. We'll plot the value of the stress on the x-axis and the value of y on the vertical axis. So I select both of those by holding control down and I'll insert a scatter plot with no data points. After cleaning the graph up a little bit, this shows me the stress as a function. So sigma x, the normal stress, is a function of y. The beam is under tension towards the top of it. It's actually under tension even at the uh, y equals zero. The neutral axis is right below where I define the origin in the graph. It shows a linear relationship, uh, nearly linear relationship with the stress, which is uh, what we would expect for this type of deformation. So here's a quick way to make a graph of all of the data from your SolidWorks simulation. And now we could just, uh, if you wanted to, we could copy that and put it into our report and turn that in. Incidentally, if you'd like to do this, it shows a nice way, it shows a nice uh, cut view of the simulation. What I did was I right clicked here and I hid uh, the split, reran the simulation, and now it runs it without that split present. And what you did, or what we did in this simulation, was to graph the stress as a function of y. This was y equals zero, somewhere, in, somewhere right in here. Here's the neutral axis uh, under tension at the top and under compression at the bottom. So this is really what we were graphing.